Hello, I'm Lamar Marshall with Wild South Cultural Heritage Director, and I'm going to take you on a little tour today over some Cherokee trails about 40 miles high. Notice here on this map the trails in red and yellow, how they connect all the modern towns as well as the old Cherokee towns which are sitting on modern towns. This next little drawing illustrates the, the way that the Cherokees lived up in the hidden valleys of the great mountains of the Appalachians. The great Smokies, the Newfounds, the Balsams, the Cowies, and they were like barriers that protected them from the outside world for many, many years. Here's an early map of about 1727 showing the Cherokee towns as they were mapped at that time. Uh, probably one of the first maps that was, none of them were very accurate, but this was still a great uh, map. By 1755, and I'm going to show an enlargement of this, you can see I've highlighted major Indian trails. Uh, John Mitchell made up and it uh, really showed more of the of the towns, uh, Nikwasi, Kanuka, and these are up in the middle Cherokee towns. So we're going to begin on the coast of uh, South Carolina at Charlestown, which is now called Charleston, where the great trading uh, center of the world was in the 1700s. Well, there was a trail that left Charleston, and it, uh, it, it was an Indian trail, an ancient Indian trail, and it followed the, all the way through South Carolina and entered the mountains of North Carolina, Georgia, and uh, eventually Tennessee. So we're just kind of following along this highlighted trail, and I plotted this by using um, old maps and uh, survey plants and and information that identified exactly where this trading path was. Some of it lies under modern roads, some of it lies abandoned in the woods in the form of deep entrenched depressions. And it's a very amazing uh, study to actually get out there and look at these old, old trails. Now, we're looking at one trail here, but there were many trails that crossed from the east to the west and uh, trails that were not as significant as the trading path that just crisscrossed the uh, entire countryside. Uh, one of the first forts that were built was Fort Congress, up, uh, which is modern Columbia, South Carolina. And uh, I illustrated the fort with a little fort symbol here. And then I dropped in some sign. And these are uh, Six Mile Creek, Twelve Mile Creek, uh, Beaver Dam Creek. These were places that were noted on the 1730 and 1750 and other maps that showed where the traders and the Indians stopped and camped. So that's very interesting. Salute Old Town was located, it was probably the first town that, would, that you would come to, but it was just a, uh, only there for a short period of time in, during the trading days. It was kind of a halfway point. If we move on up, we can't come to uh, oh, 96. They built a fort at 90, what became the 96 district, and then Fort 96. And uh, all the little places like Coronac Creek, Boonesboro was a little fort that was built early on. And the trail wound on and on. It was probably 250 miles before you got up into Cherokee country. And now here we're at Creightonville, and this green line that I've illustrated here was a boundary line back in the 1760s. It was a, actually a boundary line of 1775. And it uh, was the end of the white claims at this time because the Cherokees had, had ceded the, the land to this point. And then beyond that, you're in Cherokee country again. And we're crossing uh, over now and about to get to Fort Prince George, uh, Fort Prince George, Kiwi Old Town. And that was the, the great military outpost in those days. And it was in the, er the lower towns of the Cherokees. Now, these towns were vulnerable because they were close to Charles. They weren't really close, but they were, they were the first towns you'd get to. And there were no mountains to protect the towns from armies. It's later proved to be fatal. Now we're leaving the uh, Fort uh, Prince George area, which is just north of modern Clemson, and crossing up through uh, the upper, the very northwest corner of South Carolina. And we cross over what, by the, over the Oconee Mountain, Oconee Old Town, Chaga Town, uh, and then up on War Woman Creek in northern Georgia. Uh, Tuckerichi Town was was there, and these trails were actually mapped very detailed by the British in the 1760s, and uh, and then the journals of that time, and also the journals of the 1776 Revolutionary War, when the armies came into the Cherokee Nation. So I'm following along, and Clayton, Georgia, that you see here, was Tacoa Old Town, and that was called the Dividings. You see.
see the trails that cross there, or multiple trails. But we're going to continue, <clears throat> continue on to the northwest and uh, head towards uh, Fort Loudon and the Overhill towns of the Cherokees. We are bypassing the middle towns and the valley towns uh, to an extent, but the, the path eventually goes into the valley towns uh, through a modern Hayesville and then uh, to modern Peachtree where it crossed the mountains and then ascended the Unicorn Mountains. You can see here Murphy and you can see the extensive uh, major trails in yellow that emanate out from this, from this point. Now from uh, just north of Murphy, just north uh, east of Murphy, the trading path, as you see noted there, crosses on over the Unicoi Mountains and uh, goes through the great Cherokee town of Teleco. In fact, it was called Great Teleco. And there was a, traders were stationed in all of these various regions of the Cherokee towns. Teleco Plains is the, mo well, the modern town of Teleco Plains is located at Great Teleco, or Teleco as the Cherokees uh, pronounce it. From there, the path went not too far and it got into the, uh, the Overhill Towns proper. This is just in the very eastern side of Tennessee. Fort Loudon was established there in the 1750s under the auspices of protecting the Cherokees from the French. It turned out to be that the British wanted to control the entire region and later they wanted to control the Cherokees. Uh, and a, a war in 1760 and 1761 was fought, uh, which resulted in the fall of Fort Loudon and then many of the Cherokee towns being burned by the British Army that marched through. So the trail crosses back over the Unicorn Mountains uh, after it passes through uh, Chilhowee and Tallahassee Town, Tallahassee being the last of the Overhill Cherokee Towns. The trail takes off through the mountains, uh, two or three different prongs of the trails, and up going through modern Robbinsville, which was Chiola, and Buffalo Town being located uh, just north of there also. So in our little tour though, we're going to kind of kind of ramble around over the Cherokee country. And you can see Buffalo Town, Chioa Town, Stickoa Town, and then just off of the, the Great Lodge and the Snowbird Mountains, we fall into the valley where Andrews is located, and we're in the valley towns. And these valley towns were spread up and down the, the Valley River, the Hiawassee River, uh, Tuscuiti Creek, and other uh, uh, streams and valleys in that part of the, of the territory. The Nandahala Mountains separated the valley towns from the middle towns. You can see here the trails crossed over the mountains, and the middle towns had uh, the towns were basically located on the Little Tennessee River. And we're going to probably see uh, if we'll get back down to Clayton, Georgia. But from Clayton, Georgia, the um, Great Trading Path forked and went up over the Blue Ridge at Raven Gap, Mountain City, Georgia, and it followed the Little Tennessee River to Franklin, and as it followed the river towards Franklin, it passed Estato Old Town, Kiwochi, Tassenti, Achoy, uh, Tassi, and many of the middle towns of the Cherokees. So you can see that in this shot here, Clayton, down in the lower left-hand corner of the, of the Google Earth map, and you can see that the path, and we'll show you some snapshots that we've made here, of the Valley Towns one, you can see without the Google Earth moving, uh, the various trails and the towns and the locations. And then back to the Overhill Towns, see the snapshot that shows the towns. Now you can zoom in way on down to the ground. I don't, I'm don't. i not going to be able to show the exact locations of a lot of Cherokee sites because uh, we don't want looters out there poking around looking for things. But you get the idea. Google Earth is a powerful tool that you can record data, geography, history, and uh, eventually work in the three-dimensional uh, models of Cherokee towns and just an uh, incredible, powerful way to illustrate cultural heritage and history.